All right, what is up everybody? This is Chad from NFT Pirates. Today I wanted to do a completely raw, unedited video of just my history with Vivi, when I started, what I learned early on, what I fucked up on early on, uh, you know, what parallels I can draw from the past and present them to you now, and how the current market sentiments have maybe changed or not changed, and then maybe to draw some insight and conclusions as to what the future of VV will look like. So it's gonna be, again, completely unedited. My dog will be running around while she's, she's, she's sleeping now, which is good. I got a glass of scotch in my hand. And yeah, I just wanted to be, you know, as authentic as I could, uh, try to communicate with everybody as effectively as I could. And again, I apologize if I'm stuttering or I say the wrong thing, it's completely raw. And I just wanna to try to, you know, give you the full grasp of what happened back in March, 2021. And again, talk about what parallels we can draw to now. So I joined the app on March 9th, 2021, when there's about 14,000 people, maybe a little bit less. And uh, the way that I found out about the app was through a guy on YouTube named Everything Currency. Uh, so he, you know, I was a small YouTuber, probably bigger than me now, but still small in relative terms to crypto. And he just kept talking about different altcoins that could moonshot. At the time, um, my fiance at the time and I just bought a house and we actually moved back with my parents temporarily while the house was being built and we moved from a condo in Toronto. So it was a really unique period in my life. Uh, and at that same time, I was recovering from ACL reconstruction. Uh, so I had a lot of time to do nothing uh, and just sit around and learn and uh, try to invest my money. And so, yeah, so I basically find this guy, he's talking about Omi, uh, he's talking about a bunch of other coins and I said, you know what, it looks interesting with Omi, NFTs are really hot right now, it looks like this is an up and coming thing, you know, let me let me try to get into it. Did a little more research, found another YouTube video from a guy, it was like 200 views only on uh, why this coin is going to moonshot and all this different stuff, so I was like, you know what, so I threw five grand in at .0027, uh, so again, I think it was like March 9th, and then I believe maybe that same night or the next day is when I first like, you know, downloaded the app. Uh, but when I did download it within the hour, I was freaking out. Uh, I ended up buying 18 Todd's at the time, uh, just because I, I, I went on the Telegram group. So I first opened the app. I didn't really know what the heck was going on, to be honest. Uh, it was obviously confusing. There was no marketplace. I just saw, I saw a bunch of stuff sold out. Then I went on the Telegram group and I saw everybody talking about Todd. Um, and there was like only like something like 600 and something Todd's. No, that's not right. It's about 1600 Todd's maybe. No, no, this was, sorry. It was 600 something Todd's purchase. So if I had wanted to at the time, I could have gotten the 700s, 800s, I think for serial numbers. But um, anyway, so I've seen all these people talking about Todd and they're saying, oh my God, it's the first NFT, da, 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 da. And so I was like, okay, this kind of makes sense. And then I was like looking up licensed NFTs. I was looking up, you know, how many licensed NFTs are there? And I just kept seeing individual artwork and didn't see licensed. So it just got me really interested. So anyways, I ended up purchasing 18 Todd's um, because I thought, hey, everything else is kind of sold out. That was an ultra rare or that had, you know, a lot more scarcity. Uh, and I saw the prices of those. So I saw like the gold moogly was like 13 grand or something like that. People were trying to sell it for on Telegram. And so I was like, oh my God, these things could really take off. So if this thing sells out, you know, what could happen next? So that was kind of how it started. Um, I, I can't, I can't remember the timeline exactly, but my brother also came in and he was the one who was like, oh my God, it's the first thing you should purchase it. And if I only listened to him at the time, he literally looked at me and was like, dude, you know, this is the first ever NFT for VV. If this app ever does blow up and you buy like a hundred of these things, I guarantee you, you'll make your money. And we actually almost came up with a plan to basically say, we're going to buy a hundred and then we're going to lock it away in a book or lock it away in our phone and just like never touch it for an entire year and then just show up a year later and see what happens. And if we would have done that, uh, so what was that, March? Yeah, so like it would have been a year, so it would have been like insane numbers. Probably would have been something like, taught at that time was like seven to 8K or something like that. Um, so just, you know, if you think about that from a $79 investment and if we would have bought 100, you know, it would have been crazy. The thing that they did have back then is you couldn't buy more than 25 in one account. So as soon as you bought 25, they'd say like, that's the max for this account, but you could have easily just opened up another account, changed your email, whatever, put it in a new name. Well, same name, I guess. But uh, yeah, like if you really wanted to buy a hundred, you, you could have is what I'm trying to say. So that was a huge opportunity missed. And it's just amazing because whenever you take big risks in life, especially if you have the, you know, if you can afford it, um, 
then it's actually not that big. It's not as big as you think. Like I, I at the time I could have bought a hundred Taj, which is just crazy to think about now. Um, but obviously that would have set me up and there's, you know, big guns on the app now, like Silicon Secure, uh, who did do that, who believed in it and who kind of said, okay, well, I can't get Rizzo now. I can't do this. I can't do that. So let me stack up on whatever's next. Right. And then you have, um, so, so anyway, so then at the time as well, there was like real OGs and then there was like the new people coming in we were trying to be OGs and they're like, you're not OG. Like you guys came in in March. We've been here since November. So they were like, you know, almost like some of the designers, they were like beta. Uh, and it was just funny because they're like, they were making fun of us and they were like, there's no way you guys are OGs. Like we're the OGs, you know, you idiots. Like you guys are getting Todd. So everybody's kind of laughing at me and stuff like that at the time. It was just, you know, it was hilarious because, uh, and so anyways, I, got, I started getting like really fascinated by some of these guys that had like the gold Mooglies. They had like the HQ-19 at the time was a big grail that they had. The Donnie was like unreachable because at the time it was 20K and like nobody had any leverage. So like you, you kind of had to go in there with 20,000 to bang out a Donnie, right? You couldn't just, you couldn't just like walk in and be like, all right, let me buy 20,000 gems. Canadian, that'd be like 32 grand with taxes unless you're doing some kind of, you know, off, uh, off app deal, right? So, so anyways, yeah, I remember like showing up to a few of these like uh, AMAs that I had at the time. And I remember Johnny Dunn in one of them. And I remember his voice was so raspy. I was like, this guy's fucking cool. And hearing all these different guys speak. And uh, and so then I was like, you know what? This is crazy cool. And I just started like, then I went into the Nightwing drop. And Rizzo at the time, I remember on Telegram, people were selling it for 2 to 4K. When before, when the market was actually open, it was uh, only selling for like, I don't know, a few hundred dollars. At one point, I think they... Like somebody said that they had to almost put them on discount because they weren't selling. I mean, I don't know how true that is because I wasn't there, but that was the stories I heard then. And then whatever OG, real OG, they were super smart as they like, just like said, if you want Rizzo, it's two to four K. And I remember seeing like on Telegram, like two K USDT come through and then it was four grand US, uh, TD, uh, USDT. And at the same time, Nightwing was dropping. And I was like, okay, here's my chance now, right? Nightwing's going to drop. Uh, this was like, I don't know, middle of March or late March. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be able to kind of get now the new Rizzo. Uh, and, and pretty much even if it only sells for 2K USDT, like I'm still going to like start making bank. And at that time, I couldn't even fathom Todd being, you know, this even more su superb than uh, the Nightwing. Because at the time, you're just thinking this is like, you know, one fourth the additions and it's an ultra rare and it's the only, you know, Nightwing in the black and white series, even though there's going to be another 60 something Batman. So all these thinking that you had back then was like completely inaccurate, which is just fucking nuts when you look back at it now. And so I ended up buying like, so I obviously didn't get Nightwing on the drop. Like, as you guys know, I'm the fucking worst at drops in the world. Uh, so I didn't get Nightwing on the drop. Then I started like just going in Telegram and just buying like as many Nightwings as I could with the money that I had in Omi. So I started taking money out from that and being like, here, you, you know, I'll give you 1300. I think I was literally buying them for a thousand to 1300 at the time, which is embarrassing, but I just want to be real with you guys now. Cause again, I thought, I thought that was the next thing to pop. And I was thinking like, okay, now the traction's coming in. There's not that many NFTs. We're going to have like a huge amount of demand. Uh, and I was wrong. So I ended up buying like, I don't know how many night wings I'm not going to say, but probably like six to seven night wings or something. Uh, and then obviously then the drops just kept piling on and things started to get a little more diluted. Um, and then the things that we didn't realize at the time, which was like scarcity you thought would win because it was just like such, you know, so few of these things. Um, and, and everybody thought at the time was as they get more and more users, what they're going to do is actually increase the addition sizes. So when we saw Donnie of like 150 additions at the time or prof of like 400 additions, or HQ19 of 500 editions, or all these old OG things. You know, we just thought like, there's never gonna be edition sizes like that again, because we're gonna have millions and millions of users. And then basically these are gonna be the grails that people want, the scarce stuff that you can't get. You know, little did we know that comics and all the other crap would be like, you know, 250 editions here. And like, I'm sure in the future, we're gonna have like one of ones and stuff like that. So, you know, popularity really went out the day. Um, <clears throat> another, I think a really significant drop that I want to bring up is the Superman drop because again, you know, it came out as an uncommon, you know, everybody didn't really know what the worth of it would be. Um, I did a video because I think it was retailing for like, I forget what it was like 60 gems or something. 
And then people were literally putting it back in the market at like 70 gems for Superman. And I was like, so I did a video and I was so pissed. I was like, all right guys, like, you know, this is only 70 gems. Like this doesn't make any sense. This is Superman FA, whatever, do what you want. But like, I'm stacking up and man, again, like I stacked up, but as soon as I would stack up, I would like want to sell something off for one of these scarce items. So the whole time I was chasing the golden Mooglies, the platinum Mooglies, the HQ 19s, all of these different things that I couldn't get. And I was like, you know, leveraging all this other crap that I bought, right? And what's, what's crazy now is like, if I look back at these opportunities and I bought like, let's say 50 Superman, you know, a hundred Todd's, like I would have been a millionaire it, like in no time. Like it would have just been, you know, the easiest thing, especially if I sold everything back in that peak in February. So it is difficult looking back to be like, damn, if only I did this, if only I did that. Um, you know, that, that's obviously the hardest thing I think that we all have here. Uh, one other thing that I want to share is I've actually never really hit a, a crazy drop. I've had a few things that maybe it sold like, you know, three, four X in the aftermarket that I hit on a drop, but I never hit like a secret rare Spider-Man or even a secret rare comic or, you know, the, the, the new one that came out AF 15, I didn't even hit the drop. Um, so, you know, a lot of the things I did was just basically just getting in early and just, and just flipping. Uh, so I'm kind of like going back and forth through the timelines here, but I just wanted to say like, it just, you know, it's amazing to me back in the day, how many people were blind to that concept of popularity. Uh, there were some people, I think like the Todd father, Silicon, a few others that were really intelligent, were able to kind of see through that pot, probably with like their past experiences and stuff. But a lot of people were just trying to like run up for those next things or they'd sell off way too early. Um, and so, yeah, so another big thing that happened is uh, Marvel one came out and uh, it was around my wedding time, so I didn't do much research, but when the comics first came out and the reason that I think they were so cheap is they didn't have the AR functionality. So now we have augmented reality. You can twist, tilt, do all this stuff with your comic. And the other thing is a lot of people just thought they were like reprints. They're like, oh, of whatever, like these are just, you know, reprinted from the original. It's not really the real thing. And so when they came out and the common was like going for two to three bucks, I have a really good friend of Comey Homies who actually went into the market and was like, just fucking buying up all of the like you know all of these comics going for two to three dollars going man i don't know what people are doing but i'm just gonna stack these you know you're stacking low mints you got the sr in an auction i believe i'll let him share that story but we got it for a really really good price and uh yeah and i was sitting there literally at the time with like at least eight grand and i uh i i think like i definitely bought some i maybe bought like 30 or 40 but i was like hey like i could have easily went crazy um but instead i had my golden moogly i had those things that i wanted to flex and I thought they were way cooler. Um, but looking back, obviously that wasn't the right move. So, uh, so yeah, so at that time, so that's why I think comics kind of really took off because then a few weeks later that, that same Marvel one SR went to like 50 K. So it actually dropped August. I forget exactly the date, like August 14th or something. And then like by mid September, that's when we had this huge bull run in the comics. And that's when a lot of these secret rares and stuff that weren't even that really popular in real life we're going for like 60k. I remember there was the 250 edition drop of I forget I'm, I'm gonna screw it up, but con something con or uh, anyways, it's one of the first comics that dropped. There's 250 editions and it went for like 60k. And so there was this huge thing that happened in the market. And at the time I had, you know, Spider Man Secret Rare, all these other things. And I was like, shit, man, like, the, like, I'm done. The comics were the right play. And then as soon as all that money was made in the comics, they swing it back into the collectibles. And then right after that, it was the Disney week. And I think a lot of you joined, or most people I think that were following me joined then because I went from like 2000 subs to like 6,000 in the course of like a month and a half, just from just from the Disney week. Um, and so Disney week again, like I sold a bunch of stuff off before then. And then pretty much uh, for Disney week, I like <laughs> only had like a smaller amount of money and I was able to make some good moves during that week where like I regained my position and, and was able to get a bunch of other stuff. And then, you know, long story short, then obviously we had the huge February rush, uh, which could have been, you know, a few different factors there that which is like gem exploitation, maybe a lot of whales wanted to sell off, maybe a lot of smart people knew that crypto was crashing. And then this was like the, you know, the big way to sell, I have no idea. Um, but one tip I've learned from that week is whenever you see the fucking whales selling, that's when you sell. <laughs> uh, 
um, because you know they're experienced and they know what they really know what's going on. So um, I mean, I, I, I never financial advice. Do whatever do whatever you want to do. But I'm just saying in terms of my personal experience, I'm always inquisitive about that kind of thing. Well, this person's really invested. Why are they selling right now? Uh, just good questions to ask yourself. Uh, yeah, man. So I mean, you know, that that's kind of just a, a quick kind of overview of some of the highlights that happened in the in the course of a year, uh, year and a half rather that I've been kind of on VV. And now we're kind of hitting this point again in time where, you know, we've got a worldwide recession happening, we've got the war in Ukraine, we've got inflation at an all time high, we got gas prices that are high. Um, you know, we have all these different things that are kind of happening on a, on a world stage. Uh, and then simultaneously, we see that crypto is in a bear market. Uh, we see that NFTs have kind of died off and everyone's kind of like, you know what, maybe VV is tanking. Maybe this is the end of VV. I'm seeing a lot of people, especially on Telegram. That's where a lot of, a lot of people have more negativity, but they're saying like, this is the end of VV pretty much. And, and for me, it's, it's not even close. It's the beginning of VV really for, for me in my perspective. And I'll share, I'll show you that with you now. So uh, in, in the real world, right, we have like all these different things that are made physically and, you know, a lot of them don't retain their value. If you go to like a comic book shop, again, you see like, you know, tens of thousands of comics there for like a few dollars a piece, if not cents sometimes. And then there's the key ones that are worth like a ton. Uh, so just like on Vivi, that's why my, you know, perspective from the beginning, although I chose incorrectly, was that grails would stick out and that everything else would kind of, you know, slowly you know, be obviously maybe above retail, but not by a, a significant amount. And so now we see that kind of philosophy paint playing out on VV. You see, for instance, Amazing Fantasy 15 Secret Rare at like 17K just came out in a bear market. Um, so, you know, what, what, what the heck would that be in a bull, right? Everybody probably thinks it's going to be at least 100K. Um, so anyway, so then now you're kind of seeing how this stuff is playing out. And the more and more collectibles that we have, the more comics and more verticals, all these different things then I believe that a lot of these sets and a lot of these uh, collectibles will kind of have more dilution unless we have just some kind of crazy demand. Um, and, and I'm sure we will get there one day, but I just want people to be kind of aware of that. Now, in contrast to that, what we haven't seen in the physical world is some kind of you know master collector program where if you go buy 100 comics at your local comic book shop, that you get like recurring interests or points or discounts or things like that. Um, where like there's actually an incentive for you to hold. So that could actually change the entire dynamic of the market. Uh, so that's one thing. I think Omi to NFT is another huge thing. Uh, you know, I've even got crypto right now that I'm just holding and I'm like, man, I think I would have actually used it on AF15 if, you know, if there was that bridge and especially now that there's no off app trading and, and, and all that stuff that's kind of been, um, uh, you know, talked about now as a, as a, as a disclaimer from Vivi, then now you're kind of stuck, right? And you're kind of going, well, I'm not going to spend, you know, $21,000, um, Canadian money to get this comic right now. And so I'm just, it's, it kind of hurts. You're just sitting there going, damn, like, I wish I can do it. So I think Omi to NFT, uh, would be massive or crypto to NFT would be, would just be a huge game player. Uh, OUP burning all these different things, you know, the metaverse, all this stuff on the horizon, um, so I think, you know, that's just the VV side of thing. That's just the company side of thing. In terms of the world, I really don't understand how people do not see the future and what the implications of like the first licensed products of nearly almost everything in a really high quality format. I just don't understand how people can't grasp that. Um, they may, and they may just be like hesitant because uh, right now, obviously there's a lot of, again, negative sentiments in the market. And there's not a lot going on right now. A lot of like, you know, the big whales are some, some are still here, but I think like the market action seems to be a lot slower and, you know, people are really seeing, Hey, like, how come I've been in this app? I have, you know, 20 sets or I have 150 sets and I've got all these things and I'm seeing no utility. I'm seeing, you know, uh, nothing here to kind of help me out. Like how come, you know, this guy's flipping this and getting out and he made 15,000 and I'm here holding you know, $150,000 worth of collectibles and I'm getting nothing in return. So I think there's also that aspect too. There's just a lot of things right now that I think are affecting the market. But if you think big picture, if you zoom out and you think licensed NFTs and you think VV and you think like AF15 and you think, you know, first Marvel NFT, um, first Disney NFT, Walt and Mickey, like all these different things, Steamboat, like, come on, right? 
uh, you, you start to slowly realize that, hey, you know, we're looking at probably the biggest um, collector store in the world in the future, uh, especially when the metaverse is kind of, you know, some more of a standardized thing in society where people are wearing glasses or some people work in the metaverse. And, you know, it could even be our kids. Like maybe our kids are all going to work in the metaverse and I'm going to be like, well, you got to have a real life job. You got to get out there and, you know, freaking lay some bricks or, or, or mow the lawn or do something like that. And they're going to be like, dad, I'm mowing the lawn in the metaverse. You know what I mean? So, you know, this could be another maybe five to 10 years away before we really start to see major traction or it could be just around the corner. Now, the risk for me of not being so involved in VV is, is massive because if we do have avatars of these collectibles or if we do have utility or if we do have some kind of metaverse implication where these things are very popular and potentially even interoperable, um, then I really think that that's going to you know take off. Now, I think there's still risk, like there's a lot of hurdles to jump through and they all have to be done correctly. So it's kind of like how I look at Vivi is like, we got off at a good start. You know, we went over a few major hurdles, which was like IMX, which was getting uh, Disney, which was getting Marvel, which was getting all these crazy, you know, high end companies like whatever, Javanche, all that stuff, 007. I mean, I can keep going on here, Coca-Cola. And so we had this crazy start, you know, and then we kind of hit a hurdle with a few things going on in the world. And maybe, um, you know, I don't see anybody catching up to us, but we're kind of, you know, at a standstill. And then maybe we're going to jump over the next hurdles, but the finish line is still like way down there, you know? And there's risk. I mean, like, what are the chances that you found this tiny company when it started to now growing into something like this and then maybe going into the next phase, which is like an Amazon. And uh, I think Reese recently said, I think it was an interview with Superstar Money that like this would maybe be bigger than Amazon one day. I mean, I don't know. And first of all, I just saw that on a text, so I don't know if that's accurate. So do not quote Reese. Go, go ask Reese if this is right or not. But, um, you know, anything's possible. And... And again, we haven't even had localization, right? So localization is a whole other thing where you can get literally Asian markets and all these different markets that love this kind of stuff and, and may come in and go crazy. So I, I'm still really bullish. I get where people are at. I mean, it sucks even for me sometimes because I'm like, I'm just stagnating now. I can't really do too much. Can't really make so many moves. I mean, the market again, it's not like it used to be when you're looking at that low moment, you're sniping it. Okay, quick sell again, 2K plus, bam, you just made two grand out of nowhere. I mean, that shit was fun, man. I miss, I miss those days now. But now, you know, here we are. But again, MTL, people are cashing out. They're actually getting... And, and with the other thing I want to say, too, is that, like, even with the MTL, right? Like, people can take 20000 back to their home, buy whatever the heck they want. They're still buying shit in the app. And so I think that, like, maybe even when Top Shots had the MTL... Or, or whatever the cash out, I heard like it was a massive decline, but I think that there's so many valuable items on Vivi that maybe there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, so I still think that like, you know, we're kind of at this bottom point, uh, you know, there's not even been that many institutional investments yet, if, if anything, um, you know, the marketing hasn't even started really. Uh, there's again, two camps in the marketing side. It's like, is Vivi just waiting to get everything perfected, you know, MCP, OUP, all this different stuff, and then get like maybe, you know, Pokemon and then all of a sudden they're like okay full launch strategy let's go or are they just not marketing enough and that's kind of the two sides of the story and I guess you know there there really isn't a, never a, a bad time to do get to the market because everybody wants to um, you know be a part of it but I think you know Sean from Comic Scripto said something well he's like you know why would you invite everybody over to your house if the walls weren't up and it's kind of true like maybe you'd have a few close friends over and be like hey this is how things are coming um, but maybe you want to wait till the house is built and then be like, all right, everybody come party at my mansion kind of thing. Right. Uh, and then that leaves a really good first impression. And then like, you know, like when you walk into, um, a Porsche the first time and you sit down in that car, it's so, you know, crafted perfectly and everything works in terms of the aerodynamics and the cornering and all that shit that like, you're like, okay, yeah, this car is perfected. I want it. As if you walked into something that was kind of like half ass, you know, the wheels weren't uh, on par with everything else or like, you know, the hood was kind of shifted. You'd be like, ah, like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling about this. And so when you think about the world as your market right now, you have like the really hardcore fans that see the future. They really want to be a part of it. Um, and as things progress, then you're going to have like the people that are kind of seeing it. I think somebody said this perfectly to me. There's the innovator people that get there somewhere really early. Then there's the imitator who kind of copies what the innovators did and still kind of makes money or is successful. 
And then there's the idiot, the person that comes in at the end. And I think a lot of the idiots don't see the metaverse, don't see all this stuff happening, don't see the transformation of technology, don't see the AR glasses that Apple, you know, is just putting out. Don't see the possibility of interoperability, you know, at the time. And, and so here's another thing I just want to end with this because I know this video is fucking long, but I just want to end with this, man. At the time, Todd, everyone was making so much fun of me. They're like, Todd at 10K, that's a $75 million market cap. What the fuck are you thinking? You're out for lunch. Are you high? Ha ha ha. What an idiot. What a loser. What an idiot. What a loser. All day, every day. And then we hit 14K for Todd. And, you know, I'm not saying it's going to happen again. I don't know where it's going to go. Let's, let's hope it goes back up. Um, I'm not going to make that kind of prediction, but I'm just saying like, you know, now people are doing the same thing. Like, or then, then they flooded IMX, right? Oh, it's not even a real NFT. Well, now it's on the blockchain, you know? And then now people are saying, well, it's just associated with a tag on the blockchain and it's just going to keep going, right? Like the, the fuzz is going to keep building um, until all of a sudden, like they're the friggin' AF15 is like interoperable on the blockchain and somebody who just paid 500 ETH for it. Like, I don't know, right? Somebody said that in my comments. I was like, yeah, it's not completely inaccurate. Like that could potentially be a, a, a true thing one day. So there's my little ramp, uh, rampage, rant, whatever you want to call it. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. I don't even think I had a sip of this. So let me get one of these in for the video. And uh, yeah, enjoy collecting, enjoy VV. Try to stay positive. I know it's not easy, you know, there's a lot of things on the go, but also realize like that most people aren't rich, <laughs> uh, including myself. So like, you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, am I going to feed my family this week and care about like getting a new couch or like, taking my wife out on vacation or like going away somewhere or hanging out with friends. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm putting my money there and also investing in BV, but I'm just think that like, you have to remember a lot of people also over leverage too. There's a lot of like uh, people that aren't really crypto um, uh, savvy that have come into, come into VV as well. So there's a lot of different people in here. And obviously there's a big crypto people like, you know, Dr. Profit, who's obviously a big whale and all the big whales that are, you know, doing a great job of holding up this market and, and providing so much, um, you know, futuristic insight and sharing all these amazing resources with us. But again, I think like, you know, um, just be positive, stay along for the ride. If you enjoy this stuff and this is just like my honest take on everything, never, never, never financial advice. I can't stress that enough. Like I'm just talking, I'm not doing anything, man. Like everybody's like, if you say one thing, it's so funny on Twitter, I'll say something like, oh, uh, you know, the, it, could we get the animated secret rare covers or something? Uh, or said, no, what did I say? I said, oh, the secret rare covers can one day be animated. Is this any truth to this? And people are like, are you trying to pump the secret rare covers? I'm like, okay, guys. Like, so, so that's my point. Like, there's just a lot of different, uh, negative people out there that it, they try to, they try to wear you down. But I think it just, again, if you can see through the tunnel and see the light at the end, then you're, you're golden. So Thanks everybody for listening. Uh, hopefully provided a little bit of insight to some of you. Again, I apologize for rambling on, apologize for stuttering and all that crap. Um, but I just wanted to have like a conversation just like I would with one of my friends sitting across that loves VV. So uh, again, um, I, you know, everything I said may not be completely accurate. Again, I'm just talking here. So I probably ad libbed or might have not, you know, uh, had maybe timelines perfect. Um, and, and again, I, like, I just want to stress never financial advice. I'm just, you know, kind of sharing my story, um, with all of you. Uh, so yeah, be safe, be cool. Thanks for tuning in and, uh, hope you have a great week and yeah, man, enjoy the ride, enjoy this, uh, the future and let's just see where these guys go. Take care.